Hello and welcome to another review video. This is another medical assisting review video. Um, today I'm trying to tackle some of the topics uh, with regard to emergency medical procedures and first aid. This is part one of a multi-part series um, in which I'll be discussing uh, many different things uh, and ways the medical assistant would be involved in uh, first aid and emergency medicine. So some introductory statements, introduction to emergency medical procedures. Medical emergencies occur both in and outside of the workplace, and they can result in things like sudden loss of life or permanent disability in the worst case scenarios, of course. Emergency, emergency situations that occur in the medical office, um, the physician would be the first one to provide care um, more specialized care would come in the form of paramedics, uh, EMTs, and then subsequent transport to a hospital with the appropriate capabilities. <clears throat> Some offices keep a crash cart. A crash cart is basically a cart with all of the most important um, emergency medical equipment. You know, you're going to find things on there like your uh, automatic external defibrillator, your AED. You'll find things like special medications, um, intravenous start kits where you can start to admi administer intravenous fluids, um, airway devices, suction devices, um, any, in any case, more specialized equipment that's not standard for use in, in regular medical ambulatory care practice, but may be more beneficial in an emergency is kept in a special cart called a crash cart. The medical assistant may assist the physician in emergency care. This is under direct supervision during emergencies. Medical assistants may also need to administer first aid. That is in the office for emergencies and emergencies outside the office as well. So if you've got to be familiar with basic first aid procedures, how to recognize medical emergencies and what are the right actions to take. First aid is just defined as immediate care that is administered to an individual who is injured or suddenly becomes ill before complete medical care can be obtained. So again, first aid is just that. It's the first kind of medical aid that somebody's going to receive in an emergency or an urgent situation. Why administer first aid at all? Well, lots of different reasons. Some listed here. Purposes include saving a life, reducing pain and suffering, Preventing further injury, that would be like you know, stabilizing a fracture or giving somebody a, you know, a full-sized aspirin if a heart attack is suspected. Preventing further injury. Reduce the incidence of permanent disability. Increase the opportunity for an early recovery. A little bit more on our crash carts. Crash carts are a specially equipped cart that would hold and transport medications, equipment, and supplies needed for performing life-saving procedures in an emergency. Patients are either um, brought to us when they maybe shouldn't have been, um, you know, if you work in urgent care medicine or if you go to work, work in urgent care medicine, you will see <coughs> that in a lot of cases, patients come to us who just definitely shouldn't be there, like severe abdominal pain, um, rapid onset chest pain. Those are all things that you just should not be in an urgent care for. And But nevertheless, we see patients for those things. And uh, so they come to our office um, in already experiencing an emergency, or um, they suddenly become ill at the office. We should be ready for those things. And that's the purpose of first aid training for the medical assistant, recognizing emergencies and um, team activities, team training, having a well-stocked and inventoried crash cart. Examples of office emergencies include, but are not limited to, cardiac dysrhythmias. Dysrhythmias are abnormal heart rhythms that can cause cardiac arrest. Shock, whether, whether it is a psychogenic or hypovolemic or any number of options, shock can cause a patient to become unconscious and they can actually be injured during the fall. Cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest is the heart's um, failure to um, output enough blood to supply the brain and, and body, and a patient will lose consciousness. Um, their heart will not be able to sustain that, and um, loss of life is, is definitely imminent unless we can provide emergency care. Poisoning or traumatic injury are also examples of office emergencies. 
The medical assistant is responsible for checking the crash cart. So you've got to make sure it's well supplied. Uh, so you inventory it regularly. Replenish supplies on the crash cart. Check medication expiration dates. Throw away anything that's expired. Throw away or destroy anything that's expired. And restock with, with you know, um, inventory that's not expired. <clears throat> first aid kits. First aid kits can be kept on the crash cart or all of the supplies for a first aid kit can be on the crash cart or first aid kits can be a separate item in the office. Um, as well, you may have your own first aid kits. You may have one in your home or car. Um, you may have one, um, you know, on your person. You may carry a small first aid kit in your purse or backpack, right? Um, the first aid kit contains basic supplies needed to provide emergency care. You can make your own. Um, my suggestion is if you've never made a first aid kit, buy one. Buy a simple one, you know, for whatever the purposes that you need. Buy a simple, cheap one. Use the supplies as you need them and figure out what you, what, how you can improve those on the supplies, you know, um, buying new things or buying better equipment, right? As your skills improve and as the need, as the need increases. <clears throat> One uh, definitely commonly looked over um, item that should be included in first aid kits, lists of phone numbers. You know, our phones are great. Our smartphones are great for storing all kinds of information, but it's only, you know, it's only good if it's on. It's only good if it's got power. Written down lists of numbers in your first aid kit can be, you know, that much that, that much more beneficial in an emergency. Numbers of local emergency medical providers, not just 911, but the actual numbers for the ambulance off, ambulance companies. What is the police office's police department's phone number? What's the poison control center number? Right? What are the fire department numbers? Keep those things in your in your first aid kit as well. It might be useful to keep lists of, you know, um, your own medical conditions. Okay. medications you take and keeping the medications you take in the kit, a spare set of those medications. Um, lists of the doctors that treat you, right? Those are all things that should be, could and should be included in medical uh, kits that are just often overlooked for, you know, more common supplies like band-aids and gauze and gloves and things like that. OSHA safety precautions. The first aid kit, um, at least first aid kits that are kept in any occupational areas must contain personal protective equipment, gloves, face shield and mask, or pocket mask for administering um, rescue breaths or um, ventilations during CPR. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, a federal administration says, you must wear gloves when it is reasonably anticipated that you will have hand contact with blood or OPIM, which stands for un other potentially infectious materials. We think of those as things are as things like unfixed body tissue and other body fluids, mucous membranes, non-intact skin, contaminated articles or surfaces such as gauze soaked, uh, excuse me, blood soaked gauze. Whenever possible, minimize splashing, spraying, splattering, and generating droplets of blood or OPIM when performing first aid. Wear protective clothing and gloves to cover cuts or other lesions. It's recommended that you um, perform hand sanitization, dry your hands thoroughly, and if there's any suspected cuts or abrasions on your own hands, you should bandage them and then apply gloves and you should always sanitize your hands after removing gloves. And you should avoid touching objects contaminated with blood or OPIM when, when possible. If you're gonna do that, you must have gloves on. If hands, non-gloved hands, come in contact with blood or OPIM, wash them immediately with soap and water. If mucous membranes come in contact with blood or OPIM, flush with water immediately. While providing emergency care, do not eat, drink, or touch your mouth, eyes, or nose. And if you're exposed to blood or OPIM, report the incident to a physician. Thank you. Please check back for um, part two of this multi-part series on uh, providing emergency medical care and first aid. Thank you.